This Week at NASA. Following six months aboard the International Space Station, the Expedition 13 crew of Commander Pavel Vinogradov and Flight Engineer Jeff Williams are now back on Earth. Less than four hours after their Soyuz spacecraft undocked from the station, the crew and American space participant Anusha Ansari landed safely in central Kazakhstan. I looked out my window and I saw the grass land. I knew we were on the, uh, on the Earth. Ansari had ventured to the station with the Expedition 13 crew eight days earlier. A NASA and university study of ozone and carbon monoxide pollution in Earth's atmosphere is providing unique insights into the sources of these pollutants and how they're transported around the world. For the first time, NASA and university researchers used simultaneous observations of carbon monoxide and ozone from space to differentiate between ozone produced from human activity and ozone produced from natural sources. A major component of smog, ozone in large quantities is harmful to humans, plants, and ecosystems. A new study by NASA climatologists finds that the world's temperature is reaching the warmest levels seen in the past 12,000 years. Within several decades, this temperature increase could surpass the warmest known levels in the past million years, potentially causing further Arctic melting, stronger El Niños, and increased forcing of species towards the polar regions. Members of the STS-121 crew were in New York City to participate in Wired Magazine's Next Fest. The four-day festival of innovative products and technologies is patterned after the World's Fair. NASA provided numerous interactive exhibits that were included among more than 130 that featured leading scientists and researchers from around the world. Pilot Mark Kelly and mission specialists Stephanie Wilson and Lisa Nowak participated in programs geared to students and signed autographs. 121 crew members also visited Stennis Space Center. Commander Steve Lindsay and mission specialists Piers Sellers, Stephanie Wilson, and Lisa Nowak talked about their mission with students from local NASA Explorer schools and FIRST robotics teams. They presented each student group with an American flag flown on Discovery and answered questions from Stennis employees. The 121 crew also viewed an engine test at Stennis. The water poured onto the flames caused a huge rainy steam cloud for which the crew had their umbrellas ready. Also at Stennis, students worried about their next science fair project may now complete them on time and with great success. Area families with children in kindergarten through sixth grade participated in a special Astro Camp Goes to the Science Fair. Two, one, ignition! Oh. Youngsters and parents learned about the scientific process and the principles of space travel, received a free tour of Stennis' rocket engine test complex, and were sent home with ideas for completing their own successful science project. Sixty years ago this fall, engineers, pilots, and support staff of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics helped launch a new era in aviation by establishing the Flight Test Unit at Muroc Army Air Force Base in the high desert of California. Since then, the facility known today as the Dryden Flight Research Center has been host to many historic advances in flight technology and safety. From supersonics to the space shuttle, Dryden continues to be one of the world's premier flight research centers dedicated to exploring the unknowns in atmospheric flight. And that's This Week at NASA. <laughs>